if someone sat down and said this to you at the pub, you'd be like, yeah, no, I c- I'm sure I could get on board with that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a comment on how I need to have more empathy for people. Hello and welcome to Rock Paper Shotgun. My name is Colin Mahern and I've recently been playing through the top-down adventure game that's been on most anticipated lists for years, 12 minutes. If you haven't been keeping up, this one involves you trying to get to the bottom of a mystery while you fight with the time loop that resets the world every, yeah, 12 minutes. Deputy Editor Alice Bell has also been playing it for review, so I've asked her to have a chat with me about her thoughts on the game. So, Alice, what did you think of 12 Minutes? I am not sure <laughs> what I got to 12 Minutes. Okay, okay. I think a lot of it is very good. There's a lot of stuff in there. There's a lot of thought put into it. And then some other stuff I didn't quite like as much. I thought it was maybe a little bit weird, but it's not bad. For anyone that has been living under a rock for the last god, it feels about it like a decade that we've known this game is coming. What's the elevator pitch for 12 Minutes? Alright, so you, who is just the husband, I guess, voiced by James McAvoy, come home late to be greeted by your wife, Daisy Ridley. Played by Daisy Ridley, it's not libelously, <laughs> <laughs> including real people. And she's made a, your favourite dessert, she surprises you with some nice news. And then cop called, well he doesn't have a name but he's just like the cop voiced by Willem Dafoe, kicks down your door and accuses your wife of murdering her father and then he strangles you to death for objecting to this and then you wake up again at the start of the evening as if you just walked through the door, so it's, it is literal 12 minute loop that you keep going through come home, say hello to wife, cop bursts in about 6 minutes I think and you're sort of like, well what do I do? That's your starting setup. So we're all very aware that time loop games have been in vogue and a lot of them have done it very well. Even most recently, we had The Forgotten City. How do you think it tackles that aspect? It's tricky. I don't think it does it quite as well as The Forgotten City, but 12 Minutes has a tougher job because it's a bottle episode, right? It's it's a three-person cast. It's a three-room flat that you're in and that's that's it so it's not like you can kind of run around mm. a, a big city it's a, it's a very restrained small setting small cast smaller length of time as well literally just 12 minutes forgotten city gets around it by like once you figured out a puzzle what you have to do there's a guy just a very credulous man who is there when you start a loop again that you can just tell him to do all this stuff. You can't do that in 12 minutes. The nature of the game is that a lot of stuff you still have to do yourself again once you've figured it out. That does get a little tiring, especially because, and especially in the first half of the game, there's not much latitude for you to do things in the wrong order or sort of at the wrong time because you've only got five, six minutes before Defoe Cop turns up. Mm-hmm. So you have to hit those beats. I don't want to spoil it. We, we will dance our own story spoilers. But that aspect of it, oh, that really got on my nerves. <laughs> it's so restrictive, the order in which you have to do things. For example, you might start a loop and know that you have to grab four items and combine two of those items to create another item. But then you get to a point in the loop where you realise you have forgotten another item and there's no lead way then to just go grab that item that loop is just binned and then you have to start again later on there's a bit where you sort of know that every time you start a loop you have to make a phone call might be a slightly different phone call but if you don't do the phone call at the right time or if you do the phone call after doing some other stuff or if you do the phone call in front of your wife that can mess up your whole run or there was one time where i did a whole run and i was doing really well and i knew what i was doing and then the cop was like, well, can I have this thing? And I was like, sure, of course you can have it. And he was like, well, where is it? Do you have it on you? And I was like, no, I just go get it. It's, it's in the other room. But because I didn't have it on me, because I didn't pick it up right at the start of the run, he was like, yeah, nice try. And like headbutted me. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> had to do the whole thing again. The premise is very good. I think I'm probably a bit cooler on it than you. It just becomes far too much of an irritant for me. Even the great James McAvoy can't kind of lessen the blow of just the repetition. And I get it, you know, it, it's a time loop game. I understand. Yeah. But it's too restrictive. I don't know if there would, would have been a, a... Like, is 12 minutes too short? I, I interviewed the developer and he talked about how actually the game is kind of all about empathy and you're supposed to empathise with the situation of 
kind of everyone in the game. And actually, there are a lot of times where being empathetic and making the empathetic choice is the choice that you need to make, which makes sense. I think it's clever. And I appreciate as well that they've allowed for you to experiment and do things a little bit differently. Like there are some dialogue choices or little things that you'll only see if you try doing this other thing or, or whatever. But I didn't want to experiment too much because I felt under pressure. You know, I didn't want to dance with my wife or like have a nap with her or anything because I didn't have time, man. <laughs> And the other thing, I think one of the reasons I like it a bit more is that it gets super weird, mm. <laughs> maybe about halfway through. And I appreciated the way that the story kind of twisted in a way that you wouldn't expect, because you kind of don't expect a, a game to go there. And I did like that, but also I felt that was the point where my empathy hit a wall, because without spoiling anything, there are just some things where I feel I, and reasonably so, can't go, oh yeah, no, I see where you're coming from <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, you know, it's just some things. If someone sat down and said this to you at the pub, you'd be like, "Yeah, no, I c- I'm sure I could get on board with that." <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a comment on how I need to have more empathy for people, you know. But uh, it's a it's a bit of a, a mix for me. What about the star-studded Hollywood cast? I think they did very well. Daisy Ridley for me was maybe the weakest because an interesting thing about the game is that it's top down so you don't see faces or anything I feel like you kind of have to give it a bit more go a bit harder be a bit more of a thespian like a theatre go big and she was maybe a little bit too subtle and I also feel like she kind of had the least interesting stuff to work with in some Mm. ways yeah. Willem Dafoe was really good because he's always just, a, you know, Willem Dafoe screaming at 100 miles an hour. But my favourite was James McAvoy. I thought he did a smashing job. I really liked him. Thanks very much for chatting with me today, Alice. And if you, dear viewer, would like to check out Alice's written review of 12 Minutes, then be sure to have a read of it on the website. Thanks very much for watching, you absolute star. But before you go, do remember, for all of your PC gaming needs, keep it on rockpapershotgun.com. Rockpapershotgun.com